On this episode of China Uncensored, is China a nuclear threat? Ladies and gentlemen, nothing frustrates me more than when media resorts to sensationalist headlines just to get more views. I would never do something like that. That being said, get ready to bow down to your Chinese overlords. The end is nigh. Over the past decade, the Chinese regime has increased military spending by four times, last year glutting almost $120 billion on an army that I can only assume has one purpose, destroying the American way of life. So, is China a nuclear threat? The short answer is no, but the long answer is no. Now, China does have the nuke, but they can't reach the United States. And really, who cares if they hit anyone else? I don't live there. But does that mean you shouldn't be terrified and not subscribe to China Uncensored? Absolutely not. China could get in close with a nuclear submarine, and then Los Angeles would be a nuclear wasteland instead of just a cultural wasteland. Now, there are some who would lull you into a false sense of security by saying there's no way Chinese nuclear submarines could get through the U.S. security net and get close enough to launch particularly because China has never even successfully launched a nuclear sub-patrol. But are you willing to risk the lives of your children on that? Part of the reason China's nuclear submarine fleet has never gotten off the ground, off the water, under the water, is because of a team-building exercise in 2003. The Chinese Navy put its brightest submarine talent together on a single boat so they could learn to work together better. It sank a few hours later. In hindsight, it might have been better to put them on a submarine. But did all hands go down with the ship, as was reported in Chinese state-run media? Or are they down there right now, making an alliance with Neptune, god of the sea? Now, maybe that's just Roman mythology, but are you willing to risk the lives of your children on it? Now, sure, China is the only country that's a permanent member of the UN Security Council that has never launched a nuclear submarine patrol. And sure, they're also the only ones never to have built their own aircraft carrier. Though they did refurbish one they bought from Ukraine. No, not Ukraine. I'm pretty sure that's a country. But nice reference. Anyway, it had to dock shortly after launch because of suspected engine failure. But does that mean the 2.3 million man and woman Strong People's Liberation Army isn't a threat? Well, it turns out their own ineptitude is their greatest weapon. You see, the People's Liberation Army isn't actually China's army, it's the Communist Party's army. There's a difference. In fact, new soldiers have to swear allegiance to the party, not to China, the Constitution, and certainly not the Chinese people. It would be kind of like if the Republicans had their own army and had used it to purge all the Democrats and seize total control of the government. But because of that, China's military has no joint command. That's when different branches of the military, the Air Force, Navy, and Army, can work together and know what the other is doing. Now, this is something every major world army has, except China. Uh, oh, what's that? Oh, I'm sorry. This just in. State-run China Daily has just reported that according to the Defense Ministry, a joint command system is on its way. Uh, well, okay, you gotta give credit where credit's due. Uh, what's that? Now state-run People's Daily and the Global Times and the Defense Ministry are denying it. Well, it seems like it's not just the military that can't communicate. You see, the problem is, if there were a joint command, someone would have to be the head of that joint command. And that would mean that person would have more power than individual members of the Politburo Standing Committee, the seven old guys who run the Communist Party. And since the People's Liberation Army belongs to the party, that would just be silly. In fact, the party wants to make sure it has proper control over its army, and that's why, according to the diplomat, roughly 15 hours out of a 40-hour work week, or 30 to 40 percent of an officer's career, is spent studying party propaganda, singing patriotic songs, and going over the finer points of Marxist-Leninist thought. This means when they actually get around to training, it leaves something to be desired. Air Force pilots get less than 10 hours of flight time a month. Training exercises are held on beautiful white sandy beaches that are actually nothing like any beaches you'd have to fight on in the East or South China Sea. A 2012 15-day wartime simulation saw soldiers taking time out of training for movies, karaoke, and song and dance girls. Combine that with the fact that the PLA hasn't actually been in real combat in 30 years since the Korean War, and you have a dangerously unprepared, untrained military that is controlled by people with no actual military expertise and whose primary concern is perpetuating their own power rather than safeguarding the country, which is how you get things like the Tiananmen Square Massacre. So if you weren't already curled up into a ball of fear on the floor, 
clear off a little space on the floor. Because of factional infighting within the Communist Party, it's not always clear who's actually even controlling the military. In fact, it's likely multiple groups do. That's why you can have the Chinese military officially backing down from attacking the Philippine Navy off the Scarborough Shoal, while some crack general like Luo Yuan, whose career has mostly been in military academia and propaganda and not in actual combat, can write articles for state-run Global Times called, If Friction Continues, It Will Be a Miracle If China and the Philippines Don't Go to War. Remember, this is state-run propaganda, so someone up above needs to approve it. No, probably not. So, with various party factions who have no experience with war, vying for power and willing to use extreme nationalistic jargon for their own ends, and a military that, while apparently very fond of imitating Top Gun, is not exactly top-notch, who's to say at a critical moment someone won't get a little trigger-happy when face-to-face -face with the Philippine Navy in the Scarborough Shoal, or the Japanese over the Diaokaku Islands, which some lucky fan of China Uncensored will win a trip to if they enter my Year of the Horse New Year's contest before the deadline on February 10th. For details, just follow the link below. So, clearly, this situation is not sustainable. China really needs to be more responsible when it comes to its military. Like the U.S. What China should do is spend way more on its military and get some more real-world military experience, even if you have to make up reasons for war. That's how you behave like a responsible world superpower. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Subscribe, comment, and share with your friends. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.